Hi everyone, this is a tutorial for working a Latvian braid. Um, I'm just working another sample of my Lost City jumper and I've reached the bottom of the body and at the bottom of the body um, there is a Latvian braid worked on either side of the final colour work section before you get to the ribbing. So that's the bit that I'm working right now. now the first round that you work is a setup round. I've already done that one because it's very straightforward. It's just um, knit one with your contrast color, knit one with your main color, knit one contrast color, knit one main color. You just repeat that pattern all the way to the end of your round. And that's where I'm up to right now. Now you'll notice I've got a third color attached to my work here. That's not involved in the Latvian braid. Um, you work the Latvian braid with two colors. I just have that third color because I've been using two contrast colors um, in this version of the pattern. Okay, so first of all, um, one thing to mention here is that while you are working the Latvian braid, um, each time you work a stitch, you are twisting these two working yarns around each other. And what that means is that every stitch you work, these two yarns become slightly more tangled and it will get worse and worse and worse like this as you progress through the round. So. What I recommend is that you have your balls of yarn as far away from you as you can, especially when you're working something with a big circumference like the waistband. Um, you need your balls of yarn as far away from you as you can on the other side of the room. And what that means is that you have lots of space for those twists to kind of spread out and not become too much of a pain while you're trying to work. You don't, um, try to untangle them as you're going because then on the second round that you work um, you actually untangle them as you're working um, okay so this uh, that's the setup round complete this is the second round of the Latvian braid and the first round where you're really working the pattern properly so what you're going to do is you bring both of your yarns to the front of your work because the Latvian braid is worked with purl stitches rather than knit stitches. And if you have a knit stitch of the contrast color, you're then going to purl with the contrast color into that stitch. And that helps you just to track, keep track of which yarn you should be working with. Okay, so I've purled into that stitch. Then before you do the next purl, um, you're going to twist that contrast color underneath the main color. So then I'm going to purl with main color and this is where you'll see the twisting happening. So every time you must twist those yarns the same way around each other. It doesn't matter if you start by going over or under but you have to do the same thing for the whole round. So each time the yarn I've just worked with is going underneath the yarn I'm then going to work with next. So I'll purl one with main color main color goes underneath, contrast color comes over, contrast color purl, contrast color goes underneath and you just keep that pattern going for the entire round. So you purl one, the, work, the yarn you just purled with goes underneath, purl with the other color and every time that you are purling you should be purling into a stitch of the same color. So here I want to purl with main color. So check that you're purling into a main color stitch. That just helps you keep track of which yarn you're supposed to be using next. And as you're working, what you will see happening is, and you can see it a little bit already, is those twists are starting to form. And as you work through the round, that they, they will get twisted more and more together. Um, and then on the next round that you work, you'll actually be untwisting them. I'll show you that next. Okay, so I've worked to the end of that first round of purling and twisting your stitches. Um, as you can see, these are my two yarns that I'm working with and they're really twisted together. Now I'm ready to start the final round of the Latvian braid. Um, so you're doing almost exactly the same thing as in the last round in that you're purling into um, each stitch, you're making sure you're using the same color as the stitch. So here I'm using my contrast color to purl into that stitch. But the difference here is what you then do with 
the twisting of those yarns because up until that this point we've been going under and then the next colors coming over to work that next stitch what you're doing now is the reverse of that so now instead of going under the the yarn I've just worked with is coming over and the yarn I want to work with next is coming under. The nice thing about doing this is that each time you work a stitch and the yarn comes over that you've just worked with and the yarn you want to work with is coming under, you're undoing some of those twists in your contrast in your two yarns that you're working with so that by the time you reach the end of this round your twisted up uh, yarn tails will be untwisted which is quite satisfying so um, instead of going under each time this round you're going over with the yarn that you've just worked with and the yarn that you want to work with next is coming under so you're just twisting them the opposite way to how you twisted them on the previous round. And you'll work to the end of the round like that. Okay, so I've reached that second round of the purling and twisting um, stitch pattern and I've reached the beginning of round marker. So the last thing to do is to bring your yarns to the back of your work and then you're ready to carry on um, with the next round. Now, one thing I'm just going to mention here is um, you have been working your lateral braid in the round. And so what that means is where the beginning of round marker is, you will see a little step uh, where there's a difference in the height where you started the lateral braid compared to where you finished it. There is a little step there. If that jog in the beginning of the round bothers you, then what I recommend you do at this point is to cut the two yarns that you've been working with, um, leave about six inches um, of a tail, um, and you can then use those tail ends to create almost a duplicate stitch, which helps to hide that jog in the round. Um, and I will show you how to do that in a moment. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that here you should be able to see that what we've created are um, kind of V stitches, almost like this kind of shape, pointing in to the left in that direction. And that was when we twisted the yarns under the first time and then over the second time. If you want to create that pattern going in the opposite direction, so pointing to the right instead, then you twist the yarns over the first time and then under the second time. That's what creates that difference in the direction that the Latvian braid is pointing. Okay, so I've worked the next uh, main colour round and then um, just I made a little start on the colour work. Um, but I want to show you how I'm going to use those um, tail ends of my main colour and my contrast colour that I cut off when I finished the Latvian braid just to make that um, transition from one round to the next look a little bit neater. Um, so you can see this is what it looks like without me doing anything to it. It's not too bad really, but we've just got this kind of messy area just here where you lose that um, neat kind of V pattern that you kind of want to be seeing consistently all the way through. So um, I'm going to pull my tail end of contrast colour through to the front first of all, because what I can see here is that um, this should really be joining its its partner, which is here. It really should be joining it there. And I think if that, if we if we weave in this end so that we have that um, bit visible, it will straight away neaten up the transition from one round to the next. Okay, so all I'm going to do is try to find the best place to pull that through to the wrong side. Um, so I think just here, if I push that through to the wrong side, then hopefully what we'll start to see is an improvement in that kind of continuous V shape that we want going from one round to the next. And already I think that makes it look a lot better than it did before. Um, so I would then weave in that end on the wrong side. But I'm also gonna do the same 
can find it with the um, main color and there it is so I've got the same problem there really where that one kind of needs to join its partner going down there so that then you've got that reinforced V shape continuing all the way across that beginning of round. So I'm going to take that tail end as well and weave, um, bring that one in the same way as I did the contrast color. So that contrast color end, I've kind of, it's almost like a duplicate stitch, isn't it really, where you're just trying to get the yarn to mimic um, where it should be, where it should be going. Um, so I think that should be coming into here. Okay, yeah, so I think that's really all that's needed to make that look a little bit neater than it did before. Now, this bit is obviously a little bit lower than that bit is, but I think just having that V shape continued a little bit more clearly um, across that beginning of round just neatens up the whole thing. Okay, I hope that helps.